Anyone who's climbed around a rocky shore has seen these organisms encrusted on the surface of just about any hard substrate. These are barnacles, one of Charles Darwin's favorite creatures. However, not all barnacles look like these acorn barnacles that we encounter along the rocky intertidal. In fact, acorn barnacles are related to parasites called rhizocephala, a type of barnacle that invades decapods such as crabs and lobsters. Rhizocephala are curious organisms. In their adult form, they have no body other than a system of root-like threads and a sac of reproductive organs. And, like many other parasites, rhizocephala can manipulate their hosts to achieve their own objectives. One such objective is reproduction. In fact, rhizocephala seemingly take over their hosts and turn them into factories for producing batches of rhizocephala larvae. These parasitic barnacles go through a complicated series of life stages that ultimately culminate in reproduction. Rhizocephala start out as free-swimming larvae. The female larva's purpose is to house hunt and find a suitable host on which to settle. Once she settles, she metamorphoses, burrows into her host, and spreads through the host's body as a network of roots called the interna. This root system soaks up nutrients from the fluids in the host's body. After sustaining herself this way for a period of time, the parasite extends a reproductive structure known as the externa out of her host's abdomen. When a male juvenile encounters a virgin externa, he injects male cells into it. These male cells migrate into the externa and produce sperm fertilizing the eggs of the female parasite and giving rise to a new generation of rhizocephalin larvae. Along the way, the rhizocephalin parasite alters the sexual behavior and morphology of its decapod host. For one, hosts start molting less frequently, which suppresses their growth. This ensures that as much of the host's energy resources as possible gets directed towards the production of rhizocephalin larvae. Male hosts also undergo castration and develop feminine features, such as wider abdomen and smaller claw-bearing appendages. Meanwhile, the parasite positions her externa, where a female decapod would normally carry her eggs, and contorts the shape of the externa to mimic that of a decapod brood chamber. Subsequently, both male and female hosts start looking after the externa as if it were their own egg mass. They ventilate the externa by waving their abdomens and groom it with their cleaning limbs. Similarly, come time for the externa to expel rhizocephalin larvae, the decapod thinks it is releasing its own larvae. It elevates its body and begins to wave its abdomen, sending off rhizocephalin larvae into the water. Thus goes the life cycle of the rhizocephala, throughout which these parasites employ wily tactics to ensure the continuation of their own kind.